a British counterterrorism official claimed that entities affiliated with Russia, China, and Iran are wreaking havoc on its soil. News.com has learned Matt Juke, who serves as the assistant commissioner for the country's Metropolitan Police's Specialist Operations Division, made a statement to the press in which he claimed that the three countries posed a triple threat to the UK. I don't want to be coy, we are talking about the state apparatus of Iran, China, and Russia. That triple threat is different in every case, but we are seeing some trends. The big connecting fact is money. Why would you do it yourself when a criminal could do it on your behalf? He said referring to the clandestine ambitions of three countries. If you want to move through borders, procure firearms, or threaten individuals and you are already identified as part of the state apparatus then you are at a disadvantage. But if you can carry out the sale through organized crime you can increase the prospects of deniability, he explained, via Sky News. The counterterrorism and espionage chief statement follows a slew of alleged Russian clandestine activities inside its borders. The most recently unearthed case of espionage resulted in the arrests of five Bulgarians who were accused of conspiring to collect information intended to be directly or indirectly useful to an enemy in possession of false identity documents with improper intention. Prior to this event, the case of Alexander Litvinenko caught the world's attention. The man was a known anti-Vladimir Putin dissident living in the UK when he fell ill suddenly. Top on the list of the UK authority suspects was Andre Lugovoy, who according to a previous article by News.com, left a radioactive trail back to Moscow. The latter underscored the belief that Litvinenko was poisoned with polonium-210 which is a product of decaying uranium-238. Due to incidents like these, Juke claims that there has been a significant increase on our usual levels of espionage recently, per Sky News. Juke used the opportunity to touch on radicalization in the UK pointing out that children as young as 11 were engaging in very troubling conversations online. That is extraordinary and, I think, demonstrates the volume and the intensity of online rhetoric around the ongoing conflict, in the Middle East. We always see spikes after terrorist incidents but what we've seen since 7 October has been a spike which is higher and more sustained than ever before. This is playing out online in a way which, in our experience, is unprecedented. All of that online extremism is part of a dangerous climate. Despite Juke's claims the UK has kept its terror threat alert levels at substantial, which by their assessment means that an attack is likely but the data is still under review.